Hello everyone and welcome to another Ride Overview. Before we begin I would like to thank you all for the great response to my one year anniversary video. I got a lot of kind comments and that is what makes doing this even more fun. Today we are going to talk about a very cheap coaster type, the Junior Coaster. The Junior Coaster generally has quite low stats and a bad excitement to intensity ratio. It also has really few special elements to choose from. This might sound bad, and it kind of is, but that is all easily offset by how incredibly cheap it is. To illustrate how cheap the Junior Coaster is, I have built a looping coaster and an identical Junior Coaster side by side. The looping coaster is quite average in cost, and the Junior Coaster still costs almost two times less. In fact, the Junior Coaster is the cheapest coaster in the entire game. This makes getting a Junior Coaster with decent stats and a decent capacity very cheap. However, like I mentioned before, the Junior Coaster isn't without its faults. Despite it being aimed at kids, it almost always has an intensity rating that is higher than its excitement rating. It also has an abysmal selection of elements available. It doesn't have banked curved drops or steep drops, and it also doesn't have a photo section, which means that it can't make a little bit of extra money with that. It does have one element that no other coaster has, which is the curved lift hill. This is quite useful and can make your rides more compact. However, most rides have trains that are long enough that they can put curves in their lift hills as well. The curved lift hills are still more compact as you don't need straight sections between the turns, but they're not as great of an advantage as they might seem. You generally want to use the junior coaster at the start of a scenario as they're cheap and can make a lot of money. If you don't want to use micro coasters because that feels like cheating, the junior coaster is one of the best early coasters because of its very low price. If you only charge for the entrance, the junior is also very good, as it is once again a cheap coaster that can attract guests and keep guests off the path. It does raise the guest cap of your park significantly less than some of the big coaster types, like the twister and looping coaster, but it is still worth it. Like I said before, the junior coaster has access to really few special elements. It has the station, brakes, block brakes, S-bands, small helices and large helices in vanilla RCT2. In RCT Classic and Open RCT2 it also has boosters. This might seem fantastic, but it is not as great as it sounds. They only go up to 53 km per hour and they are quite weak, meaning that you need quite a few of them to get up to speed. For compactness you're often better off using a lift hill. You can add boosters to short straight sections during the coaster to keep the speed a bit higher, but they're not nearly as useful as the boosters from a coaster type like the Twister Coaster. Now let's take a look at the stat requirements that the Junior Coaster has. It needs to have a drop of at least 4 meters, it needs to have at least one drop, and it needs to have a top speed of at least 25 km per hour. If it fails to meet any of these requirements, its stats get divided by 2 for every requirement that it fails to meet. You may notice that these are some of the lowest stat requirements that we have seen so far. This is another reason why the Junior Coaster is so cheap. It doesn't need to be very tall or very long to get somewhat decent stats. In this video I have 5 different Junior Coaster designs that I will show you. Normally I would have both designs that include boosters and designs that don't have boosters for a coaster that only has boosters available in certain versions. But because the Junior's boosters are so bad, I am not going to do that. All these designs do not include boosters, but if you play Classic or Open RCT2, you can put boosters on the straight sections of the designs to increase the stats a bit. As usual, the first design is the cheapest design without stat penalties. We have two designs here actually. The top design is slightly more expensive, but it is also much more useful and it is the one that I use in my parks. 
The reason it is so much better is that you can build multiple of them way more compactly than you can build multiple of the bottom design. If you build them in a row like this, they only take up a 3 by 8 space each, which is tiny for a full circuit coaster. You may have seen me using this design in the Forest Frontiers playthrough that was playing during the Q&A of Monday. The second design is a slightly larger variant and has two trains. This one makes much more money than the previous one, but it's not as compact and as cheap, although it's still quite compact and quite cheap. This design will make way more money than the cheapest design, but building multiple of the cheapest design will attract more guests and can potentially hold more guests off the path, which is useful for preventing overcrowding. It depends on what you need. If you really need money, which you often do, this design is fantastic. Up next is the big design. It really says something when the most expensive design in a ride overview still costs less than 5000 euros. This design is the same as all the other large designs. Useful for when you want a lot of capacity or want to make a lot of money per ride. Or when you just want a larger coaster because you like how they look. The fourth design is a Mobius coaster, which is slightly less compact, but has an incredible throughput. This can be a very good design, although guests do sometimes tend to heavily favor one side of a Mobius coaster over the other, which can lead to empty trains on the unpopular side. When I was building the Mobius coaster for this overview, I first accidentally built two separate and identical intertwined coasters. It has six block sections, but when you try to spawn five trains on it, they all spawn on the red track and three trains spawn inside each other at the station. The last design is one that is only useful in scenarios where you need to build 10 coasters with an excitement rating of at least 6. It does 7 laps so it has a horrible throughput, but it does reach 6 excitement without any boost from stuff like scenery and is quite compact and not that expensive. And that was the junior coaster. It is a great coaster type because of how incredibly cheap it is. However, you do get what you pay for, as it has bad stats and not a lot of options. The designs featured in this video are in a zip file in the description. A calculator that you can use to calculate how much you can charge for your rides is also in the description. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.